Elementary Algebra Final Assessment 3 Review Questions 14 through 17 Outcome 3 Notation In question 14, you're given the instructions multiply the polynomials. Here we have a binomial, meaning two terms, multiplied to a trinomial, meaning three terms. What we're going to do is take the first term in the binomial and distribute it individually to each of the individual terms in the trinomial. So we'll take this negative 7m and we're going to distribute it to the first term. So we have a negative 7m times a negative 6m to the second. Negative 7 times negative 6 is going to create a positive 42. m to the first plus m to the second gets us m to the third. Next, we're going to distribute this negative 7m to the second term. We have a negative 7 times a 1, which leaves us with negative 7, or minus 7. An m times an m gives us m to the second power. Now we're going to distribute our negative 7m to our third term. Negative 7 times negative 7 makes a positive 49. So plus 49. An m, we don't have an m on the other side, so we just carry the m down as is. So now we've distributed this negative 7 to each of the individual terms in our second polynomial, our three terms in our trinomial. Alright, so now we're ready to distribute the second term through. So we're going to take this negative 8 and we're going to distribute it to this negative 6 m to the second. So a negative 8 times a negative 6 is going to make a positive 48. We don't have an m here, but we do have an m here, m to the second. We'll carry it down as is. Alright, so now we're ready to move on and distribute the negative 8 to our second term, which is m. So a negative 8 times a 1 makes a negative 8, or minus 8. An m over here, we don't have an m to multiply it to here, so it's m times 1, which is just m to the first degree. Lastly, we're going to distribute this negative 8 to this negative 7. So a negative 8 times a negative 7 makes a positive 56. Now we're not quite done at this point. Now we need to go back and see if there are any like terms that we can combine to one another. So looking, we have an m to the third he over here on the left side. We look to see, do we have any other m to the thirds? We don't have any others through the problem. So we'll carry down this 42 m to the third as it is, and I'm going to cross it out so that I know I've already used it. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go a negative 7m to the second, and as I read over I see I have a 48m to the second. These two are alike, so I can combine them. A negative 7 plus a positive 48, they're opposites, so we'll do a subtraction, and we'll keep the sign of the larger. So 48 minus 7 is going to leave us with a positive 41 m to the second. So I'm crossing these out because I've already used them. Last, or excuse me, next I have a 48 m to a negative 8 m. Again, they're opposites, so we'll subtract. So this then leaves us with a positive 41 m. So we've used these two up. All that's left is the 56. It has a degree of 0. There's nothing left to add it to, so we'll just carry it down, plus 56. So there's our final answer, 42m to the third plus 41m to the second plus 41m plus 56. These instructions read, multiply using the rules for special products. Now before I talk about the rule, for this particular special product, I want to kind of look at 
what you might first attempt, right? If you forgot your special rules, right, for these products. When you look at this, I've got a binomial against a binomial. When we have that situation, we can use what's called the FOIL method. In the FOIL method, the way it reads is the F represents or lets you know that you should distribute the first two terms to one another. So 3a times 3a to create a 9a to the second. The O is then telling you to multiply the outer two terms. So the outer two terms would be the 3a on the outside here and this negative 7c over here. We need to multiply these two together, a 3 times a negative 7, we get a negative 21. And the A times the C carry them down, A times C. So we've taken care of the O. Uh, the I stands for the inner two terms. The inner two terms would be the 7C and the 3A. You look, they're to the in, inside. So we'd multiply the inner two. So a positive 7 times a positive 3 is going to create a plus 21ac. Next, we're going to multiply the last terms, or the L in FOIL. So the last term in the first binomial is 7c. The last term in the second binomial is a negative 7c. So a positive 7 times a negative 7 is going to create a negative 49c. Now I come back and I combine like terms. The 9 a to the second power, this one doesn't have a like term, so it just carries down as is, 9 a to the second degree. The middle two, the negative 21 and the positive 21, they both have the same variables, a, c. This means they're like terms, and since they're the same constant, but one is negative and one is positive. They're going to cancel one another out. This means they're going to just go away. And we're left with carrying down the minus 49c. So we end up with the binomial. Oops, excuse me. I was supposed to have a square on my c, so I have two c's. 49c squared. Okay, let's now. But let's look at the same problem again. This time we're going to follow the instructions. It says multiply using the rules for special products. When we look at our binomials, which are written down here, 3a plus 7c times 3a minus 7c, we see that two binomials look alike with the exception of the signs to the middle. We have a plus here and a minus on the second one. These two terms are referred to as what's called conjugates. In conjugates, we have a binomial that's alike with the exception of the middle two signs. One will be plus and the other will be a minus. Well, the rule in multiplying conjugates reads, if A and B are real numbers, variables, or expressions, then A plus B times A minus B will equal a to the second power minus b to the second power. So let's follow that rule. Well, what's in our a position on here is a 3a. So we're actually going to take that 3 raised to the second power, just like our instructions say here, and the a raised to the second power as well, because they're both in the a position. So they both get raised to the second power. Then we're going to come back and write in a minus sign, and we're going to take what's in the B position and raise this to the second degree. This means raising the constant to the second degree as well as the variable to the second degree because they're both in the B position. They both get raised to the second degree. Now we just need to come back and simplify our problem. So we have a 3 raised to the second power, 3 times 3, which is 9. Then we carry down our A to the second power, carry down our minus sign, 7 raised to the second degree, creates a 49, and then c to the second. So we end up creating the same binomial, 9a to the second minus 49c to the second, as we found 
using the FOIL method above. Number 16 reads with the same instructions as number 15, multiply using the rules for special products. In this case, we're given the binomial 10x plus 3y raised to the second power. Well, the rule for squaring a binomial, if a and b are real numbers, variables, or expressions, then a plus b raised to the second power is going to equal a to the second power plus 2ab plus b to the second power. Or if we had a minus b to the second overall raised to the second power, it's going to equal a to the second power minus 2 times a times b plus b raised to the second power. Well, when we look at our problem, ours is going to be the plus situation. So let's solve our 10x plus 3y to the second power using this rule right down here at the bottom where we have a plus b overall raised to the second power. So I've just scrolled the page down a little bit so we can put that in. All right, so again, we're using this one right here, this first one given. And so it's telling us to take the a position and square it. So our a position is 10x. And we're going to overall square that position. Right? Another way to write that is 10 to the second power, x to the second power, so that we distribute that 2 in onto each one individually. Then we're going to come over and we're going to take 2 times what's in the a position, which is given to us as 10x, times what's in the b position, which is 3y, plus, now we're going to take what's in the b position and square it. In this case, it's the 3y. So again, I'm just going to write this above. We can write this as 3y raised to the second power, or we can come in and distribute that 2 onto the 3 and the 2 onto the y. All right, we're almost done. We now just need to simplify our problem. So 10 raised to the second power, 10 times 10 is 100 x to the second power plus 2 times 10 times 3. So 2 times 10 for 20 and 20 times 3 is going to get us 60. And then we look at the variables. We don't have one on the 2, but we do have an x and a y. So we'll carry those down times x times y plus a 3 raised to the second power. 3 times 3 is 9, and then carry down our y to the second. So our final answer is going to be 100x raised to the second power plus 60xy plus 9y raised to the second power. Okay, next we're asked to simplify. So we want to write the answer with a positive exponent. So to get us to a positive exponent, we want to take this negative 5 raised to the negative third and rewrite it as its reciprocal so that we have a negative 1 over 5 thirds. Once we take the reciprocal, it takes the negative off of our exponent. So next, we can kind of just look at this, how it writes out. So this is going to be a negative 1 over 5 thirds or negative 1 over 5 times 5 times 5, which equals a negative 1 and 125ths.